Tan ta 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 Hey, how hey. you doing? All right, folks. This is Tim Pierce, and hey I'm guys. Pete Thorne, and we're at Sweetwater Gear Fest 2022, and we are a little bit internet challenged right now, but we're doing the best we can. We tried to do one of these a few years ago. Yes, we did, <laughs> and we were, and we ran into the same trouble. Yeah. I still feel guilty about it. So thank you guys for being so patient. Yeah, I hope, so appreciate you. I hope we you guys really can hear us through this nice, sure USB microphone we have here that they lent to me. Uh, just let us know if yeah. it's uh, working or not. If it's not working, we'll do this once we get back home. But uh, yeah, I hope it's all good. Well, we're having a great time. Uh, we're really, really busy here. A thousand things going on. Time is passing really quickly. Sweetwater's great. They've they've really become an amazing place destination yeah it's a, it's it's a heck of a place uh it's we're, we're you know in the middle of uh like fields and you know you're out in the country and stuff and then there's this mecca of uh, gear basically right and and it's it, more than i even thought i found out they have seven luthiers remember we were talking about this this morning oh, yeah. if you want something customized in any way you can buy it new and they'll take it straight to their team and they'll put they'll take the frets out and make it fretless they'll put different pickups in yeah, I didn't realize that. I didn't either. They got this like loot. I haven't even seen it. You saw it. You could literally order a guitar from here and then have like a, you know, it's a basic strap, but I want a humbucker in the bridge and I want a Floyd Rose on it and they'll yeah. route it and yeah. stick the Floyd on it and all that right from the shop. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting, I think. It's a very service oriented company. Yeah. And so, people are really nice. Uh, it's working. Okay, good. Good, God, good. That's great. Yeah, I'm glad it's working. Yeah, you stream yard. Yeah. Yeah, yay, StreamYard. StreamYard's really good, this software that we use for this streaming stuff, because it, it, it buffers nicely, and if it's a slow connection, it'll kind of make it work. And uh, right now, I mean, I'm basically doing this tethering through my phone. So <laughs> I got the laptop tethered to the phone. It's working. Mm. Can you, you see the question? Cold brew? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so what are you guys talking about out there? Are you guys talking about guitar? You want to know what we've been doing? Oh, what did we do this morning? We went in the, they've got an amazing recording studio here with a, a Neve 5088. 5088, that's it. Yeah. Full-blown studio. Yeah. Yeah. And we just went in with our good friend, Rhett, who you guys know out there. And we did uh, uh, dialing in amps, kind of like an amps in the zone video, but with uh, three different amps. Yeah, the PRS HX100. And the and Deluxe the Reverb. Deluxe Reverb. And an SLO. And then SLO, the Soldano. Yeah, just kind of like playing really loud and rocking out. Yeah. Which was fun. They all sounded great. All different animals. Very different animals. That'll be on Rhett's channel. It will. That yeah. Video, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. I took some I took some video too. I'll put some of it on my channel. It'll be, it'll be some B-roll somewhere. But exactly. you know so much about so many things that it was a pleasure to, to watch you I, talk. You know so much about so many things. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. No, you... <laughs> You. The Soldano, I actually had number like 30, and I Joe Bonamassa gave me a list, an original list of Soldano buyers, and it's like 1987, and I got about number 30, and there were some cool people ahead of me. You know, it was pretty cool. That's Eric it. Clapton got his before I got mine. How did you hear about it originally? Michael Landau. I mean, it was like he was using it, and it had that creamy overdrive, and we couldn't get those sounds easily back then. Did you hear it on a session? Like you were in a session together? Yeah. Or? No, I actually, I don't remember the actual circumstances, but we everybody knew what everybody was doing and using. Okay. And yeah, I don't remember the actual event or the actual moment. I just remember I had to have one. I ordered it and it maybe took four months. Ah. Maybe five. To, to get it from Mike. Yeah. And, and did you go one down One guy there? in one room. I went down to Melrose. And, yeah. Yeah. It's one guy in one room with one bench. The kind of legendary story about Eddie yeah. going over there and like showing up and picking up an amp. But uh, I think. Soldano had to go somewhere. He had like a like a dinner or something he had to go to. And Eddie was like, like, hey, I want to come pick up one of those amps, you know. And it's Eddie Van Halen, you know, and he like he's like, I I gotta leave in like 20 minutes. Like I gotta go to this dinner, you know, that that, that I think his wife wanted him to go to or something. He was, you know, scheduled for. I'll be there in 15. <laughs> like all the way from Coldwater Canyon <laughs> over the hill. To, in know. a Lamborghini, no doubt. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, what are you guys talking about out there? Let's see. I gotta, I gotta look uh, a little bit closer. Nembrini plugins and uh, 
uh, did you all record or just, oh, is this Brian's uh, asking about the, the amp thing? I think, did we record? Yeah, we were. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's camera mics as well yeah. as, uh, you know, the cabs are all mic'd and everything and rattled at it all. It yeah. Cool. We listened back. It was great. They have a great engineer, John, and it's, it's sounds, sounds great. So you'll see that on Rhett's channel, the really good version of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Should be really cool. Yeah. Happy belated. Is, this Plex is that Plexico? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I know I'm an old man now. Every year I just get older. What's that up with that? I don't like it. Uh, it's, uh, it's silly. What else we got here? Let's see. Sorry, I'm keep leaning over the mic here to read what you guys are talking about. I'm talking about Nimbrini plugins. Nimbrini is one of the only companies that makes a good AC30 plugin. There's very few of them out there. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll it's hard to, try to it. find yeah. it. It's good. Yeah, it's really nice actually. Yeah. And it's not. Exp that's the other thing about Nembrini plugins. They're really inexpensive. You can get a nice cool. AC30 plugin for like I don't know, they're like fifty bucks or something, or thirty or something. Really inexpensive. Maybe they're more than that. Don't quote me. Uh, that's nuts, says Kenji, and I happen to have some cashews right here. I'm gonna have one right now. Yeah, we're moving so fast that you actually have to remember to eat because we, we, we don't have time. I totally uh, forgot. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, yeah, we're really salty. Yeah. It's really fun though. A lot of stuff to do. A lot of great guitar players. A lot of YouTubers. A lot of great gear. Mainly though, Sweetwater is about the people, and I'm really impressed with how nice everybody is. They're really nice forward thinking. They are. Everybody's forward thinking. Yeah, yeah. They've been great hosts, and uh, yeah, and they're very. Uh, they do a good job. The, the interesting thing about the guitar, uh, okay, so I, my whole thing about buying a guitar from a place like Sweetwater was you're not going to get to play it first. So I was always like, well, what's that going to be like? You know, I might not like it. But the process, I guess, that they go through, and this sounds like a Sweetwater ad right now. It's not supposed to be. Um, it's just something that I've learned today. That's like the process they go through, the amount of inspections that guitar actually goes through before they ship it to you is pretty nuts. Like there's like series. The, the setup and the, the, uh, the inspection to make sure it's not screwed up in any way and all that. They go to great lengths. So I've never bought a guitar from Sweetwater, but maybe I'm less uh, uh, afraid of doing so now that I realize how much trouble they go to. It's really true. Uh, I have guitars that we get from them that we give away. And so there's a particular Orange Gretsch that's a Sweetwater exclusive, big mm. body Gretsch. And it's it was $700, but with the escalation in prices these days, it's either eight or nine hundred dollars, right? Okay, and this Gretsch, okay. they sent it to us, and it played like as well as this Murphy Lab Les Paul that I have in my hand. So that's, that's cool. a, I can. There is truth to that. They set it up so beautifully that it was just a great guitar to give away. That's and cool. So I've experienced it. You know, like, they really do care. Like you, yeah. That right out of the box, it comes out. And it's yeah. Super, they're not going to send yeah. you something that's set up all whack. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. What's this? What's going on here? Okay, so uh, <laughs> I picked up this guitar yesterday, and it really responds. It there's like a at any time you play it, it like it just it responds. And I bought it. Oh. So we're I'm trying to get a discount if I can, you know, artist discount if I can. So I'm waiting to see what it's going to cost. But I don't even, you know, I, I'm not sure even if I like the way it looks totally, I'll get used to it. But the way it sounds and the way it plays, it's exactly the kind of dream Les Paul I've been looking for, right? What's the, what's the neck like on it? Is it check like it out. Take it. Those, take it. And let's see what the profile. Oh, oh, it's thinner than I thought it was. It was yeah, really nice. Yeah. So it's a 59 it's Murphy nice. Lab, light aged, and I'm buying it. That's cool. Like the shoulder and everything isn't yeah. so... Yeah, that's nice. There's a springiness. Like, I, I, if you play a chord, every note rings just the way it should. It feels really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, it rings like that. a piano. It's really, you know, I don't want to let it go. I do not want to let this go. So, yeah, I'm sure cool. about it. Actually, I wasn't sure last night. Showed up here this morning, started playing it again. I'm really sure about it. It spoke so, to you. Yeah. It's cool. Scratch, though. Yeah, it's got some nicks and things. I thought Tom Murphy, I thought if he, you know, he's a big deal. I thought it wouldn't have any scratches, you know, like when it came from the Gibson guys. But what can you do? What can you do? Do you guys like relic guitars? When it's like that, I like it. Just that's so. Well, that's I can hide it with my done. arm, so I guess it's okay. Yeah. Well, that's how it ha Oh, I get it. It's relic. I get it. I get it. That's it. No. That's but really it just cool. really rings. It's rings. Yeah. 
It does. It's loud. Yeah. Yeah. It's loud. Yeah. I don't know if it sounds loud right now, but it's loud. It's got a through this sure microphone. Looks okay too. Yeah. Sure lent me this mic, and we had to go through some. Uh, it's like a USB C uh, situation rather than just using the laptop mic, you know. And it's, it looks kind of like a uh, SM7, but it's a USB situation. So I hope it sounds cool. Good. Yeah. How do I sound? How do I sound? Do I sound like I'm coming through a broadcast microphone? Yes, you do. That's one thing about getting older. Your voice gets better. So you have that <laughs> to look forward to. <laughs> I like that. God, not much else gets better, does it? <laughs> your appreciation gets better. Appreciation your for gratitude gets better. Appreciation for limited days on the planet. <laughs> like, I make the most of my time. Yeah, it's the truth. Uh, what's this? Uh, just purchased a sure custom classic tee with Thornbuckers and have to compliment you on these pickups. Great work. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, I love them. They're yeah. Pete's pickups. new guitar. Uh, I, I want one. I'll get one. I'll borrow one and I'll show it on my channel. Oh, I'd love That's that. Something if... I'd love to do now having it in my hands. The neck is really wide and easy to play. Yeah, I'll bring it by some, like maybe we, maybe I can come by your place sometime. Okay. Maybe by. I was going to carry it up here, but I had a mic stand in one yeah. hand and, and my computer in the other, and I couldn't get it up. Aesthetically, it's gorgeous too, which is really important. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love the way it, it looks. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna lean and the neck here. has so much to do with the tone, I've learned. Yeah, there's a lot It really does. The neck has so much to do with the tone of the guitar. I've, I've uh, told this story before, so don't, I'm sorry if you've heard this before, but uh, uh, Gil Yaron one time when we were talking about the neck and the heads specifically the headstock and how much tone is in the he, he strummed the strings on the guitar that he made for me and he he stuck the neck out and he goes bite the headstock <laughs> i was like what <laughs> put your teeth on it bite it and I, so i did it it was weird you know and, I, and then he strummed the strings and it's like like rattling in your teeth and he goes now do you want to cut that off the headstock <laughs> and i was like oh wow that was his headless guitar i never of, heard that you know. story so i'm glad you told it to me yeah we yeah. met him but he we didn't yeah, I didn't, yeah, yeah. but, but it was, yeah. it was uh, i got it you know yeah. i was like okay yeah that makes sense it does make sense yeah the neck and the amount of you know vibrations traveling through there oh let's see uh it would be cool if you guys would noodle and jam man just to be here right now <laughs> <laughs> just to get we were already about 20 minutes late uh i know you see the amps behind us and stuff that it really wasn't set up for for uh the live stream noodling jamming thing they're shooting in here and stuff but it's the lot just i'm i'm literally uh, with the internet in this room i'm tethering through my phone right now so yeah they have a big firewall on their internet because the place is there's so many people here all the time so yeah we couldn't get past that so the iphone is is providing all of our internet Accessory. We will noodle and jam another time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we as, got, as we, much as possible. We should do this again at like my place or your place where okay. we do a lot. You know, yeah. this is we're just hanging again. Yeah. It's good, good to be with this fella again. It's been a couple of years since we did this. It sure has. Uh, what like else? Riding a bike there. Uh, it's been way too long since the Tim and Pete show. Thank you. I know it has been way too long. We always have fun when we get together. And, you know. Well, getting our guests was like herding cats. I mean, we had to yeah. work so hard to get people to pin people down. I mean, when we were yeah. both free. Yeah. So that would be Phil X I'm talking about. <laughs> really good friend, but he's so busy. How about you, Phil? Yeah. We'll get him, though. Yeah. Always busy out there playing. Crazy yeah. licks. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Really good guy. Uh, come on, Tim. Please buy, sir. <laughs> uh let's see that relic okay relic is okay but five grand for a beat to crap strat i don't get yeah when you see the les paul you can just see there's a bit of checking on it i agree i mean i like even on strats or whatever if it's relic i like just the light yeah, yeah. you know the light stuff i'm okay Let's either do. way i mean your ones. guitar is a gleaming brand new ferrari basically and i'm R right really right. happy about that but on a les paul i like the relic i really do yeah I'm going to scratch it anyway. Right. Any guitar I have after five years, it's going to be completely mangled back here. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit something. So totally. this is how a guitar I own for 10 years ends up looking anyway. There is a thing to that. Like where I, when I got my old Strat, it had some wear arm wear. Yeah. So it doesn't, right. You know, all at that point, it was yeah. a whatever 40 year old guitar or something at that point. Um, so I didn't worry about it that much, but it's kind of funny when I look at photos of when I got it and what it looks like now, I don't, I don't remember it being any different it just looks like my strat it was like i put a lot of wear on <laughs> i look at it now yeah, and it's like yeah oh look at what it looked like back then there's way more arm wear on it wait but it just you know you don't notice it on it if it starts off a little worn is my point it's kind of cool because you don't worry about you it. don't worry about the first ding yeah yeah so i'm fine either way you know 
I you love are, brand yeah. new, but I love ding guitars too. I relic them myself. If you see the thing, if you're making music, if you're playing gigs and recording, yeah, uh, the guitar gets beat up. It just does. It does. That's true. No matter what, it's going to get a little bit of wear yeah. on it, and it's going to it's going to happen. And it's nice to not have to uh, to be too concerned. Uh, Fabio says, clean amp on edge of breakup. Starting to use overdrive pedals with it. Setting to use overdrive. Oh, that's funny. We just made a video on this sort of this morning. Uh, I mean, to me, it's like uh, when I hear you, you, you use the divided by 13. I know you've got a lot of amps, but those uh, the RSA and you kind of set it on the edge of breakup and then you'll hit it with your pedals. And it's like it's always the edge of breakup, right? Like, yeah. And there's a class of pedals that really just slams the front end of the amp. The one I use a lot is so inexpensive, easy to get. It's the MXR micro amp. I use the Bradshaw version, which is a little more hi-fi, hmm. but just a stock MXR micro amp would work. It's one button and one knob. Yeah. All it does is wake up the front end of the amp and it can, it's great. Just barely cracked open. You yeah. know, I, I found nothing is really great on 10 really, but when you get into the four five, six zone on anything, that's yeah. where it seems to work best. So yeah. absolutely. But it has to be the right pedal. It can't be a, dis you know, we had a, a distortion plus here yesterday mm. and I couldn't get that one to kind of, back down enough so a distortion plus yeah distortion plus is an interesting pedal it's like i kind of uh, i did this randy rhodes guitar video recently where i got to a hold of the, the the prototype that was made for randy right i mean they were sending it to him like right when he passed away and i did a video on that guitar uh and to do the video i wanted to get the randy tone so i got the four whole marshall going and i got an eq in there and then i got the distortion plus and dialed it all up for the randy rhodes i couldn't I couldn't make the distortion plus sound right. It just wasn't working. So I went to a super overdrive boss, super, which is a great eighties, like yeah, super overdrive and a Marshall's. Yeah. And so, and I did the video like that. And I actually really liked the sound I got, but like the day after I finished the video, I saw this guitar world article from, uh, I think it was like 2020 or 2021. And in there they had Randy Rhodes settings of like the, they said, try this and this with the EQ. Cause he always used a, uh, a graphic EQ the distortion plus and the Marshall. So they had the amp set lower than I was running mine. And then they had the distortion plus they had the, uh, I think the volume was cranked and the volume on the distortion plus was only on like four. Mm -hmm. And then on the EQ, it was a very specific setting with boosted mids kind of situation. When I tried their setting, it was like, Oh, <laughs> there it is. And I'd already finished the video and I like the sound I got in the video. I just did it with other pedals. Yeah. But the, the, the specific thing, I don't know who researched it or what the, the, the article for guitar world, but they did a really good job. Cause it was like, that does. Okay. That, that really does sound like it to me. So, uh, yeah. And okay. with pedals, don't be afraid to have them on zero or one. I mean, mm. Sean Tubbs, I had to have his new tilt pedal tilt overdrive. Oh yeah. And I was going, okay, how do I set this? Because I feel like I'm getting too much compression out of it. He said, just, set the knob on zero and turn it on. I was like, oh, oh okay, that's a start. And then you, I brought it up to one, two, three. Is that the boost side or the overdrive? The overdrive side. Overdrive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not the tilt side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I uh, I ended up uh, quite liking that pedal. I thought it was really cool, but I can't remember what settings I did. Yeah, I can't either, but but it's a good pedal. It really is. Yeah. And he's a, uh, a great uh, player, so... He's a, uh, you know, fantastic guitar player. It's like like yourself, is all the super touch and everything. And, um, you know, so he's going to make it sound good. That's when a, a pedal is developed with a guitar player. You're, you're getting the benefit of somebody really um, pushing back on. I mean, that's what James Santiago does. We were talking about that last night. You have a company that's making something and they're pushing this way. And you have a guitar player who's pushing this way. Mm. And they're not afraid to stand up and go, no, it's not good enough yet. No, you have to change this. Yeah. And so... When a guitar player makes a pedal with a company, you're going to get that, you know, credibility of somebody pushing back and going, no, I won't stand for this. It's got it. You have to change this. You have to fix yeah. this. You got to go back to the drawing board, you know, so. It's, tr it's, it's true thing. because many designers. And that's you too with Sir, you know, I'm sure. You, yeah. 100%. Yeah. John's got great ideas uh, and he's a brilliant guy, but what he gravitates towards traditionally is a little different than what I gravitate towards. Right. So we make each other try things, you know. And he, he'll do things where he's like, I don't know, man. I'm like, come on, come on, just try it, you know, and he'll do it. And he'll go, 
okay, that actually works pretty good when you're playing it, you know, and it's because we play different and he, he yeah. has a different, so that, and, the, and vice versa, I've learned so much from him about going the other way with things. Like a little bit about what we talked about this morning, the bass and the preamp of an amp and how much bass you're pushing through the overdrive. I learned all that from him about the, like, you can't thin it out too much or your, your single notes sound skinny and kind of, it's right. not a cool thing, you know? Yeah. But I, uh, to the, by the same token, I remember thinking that in the eighties playing uh, boogie amps cause they were real, you know, they had a lot of mid range, a lot of gain and the single notes are just like, Oh, this is so easy to play. It's like liquid. But when you play chords, it could be a bit of a mess, you yeah. know, right. whereas Marshall sounded great with chords. Yeah. But single notes were skinnier. <laughs> I still go through that. A great sound down here with chords is a little thin up here when you're up, up here soloing. So you do, yeah. you do solve it with pedals. You switch to a different amp, but it's still, you know, you've got to make a sacrifice in one direction if you want to solo. And yeah, a really great chord sound is probably too thin for solo. So, so. yeah. Like how to find that balance. is yeah. pretty, pretty interesting. I think, I think, uh, what else we got here with you guys out there? Uh, Let's see. Sweet volume is a sweet, oh, sweet volume. Sweet, uh, uh, sweet water, I should say, is a high volume manufacturer. Well, they're not really a manufacturer. High volume dealer, that's for sure. And Sir is not that. Yeah, sweet, sweet water does. I oh, God, the amount of guitars I heard they sold this year. Uh, I saw Aaron, you know, Aaron Intervals, Aaron, the other day, and he said that uh, I think they'd sold a hundred and eighty or two hundred thousand guitars already this year, or something. I'm like, what? Like, is that even? I might be wrong with that number. I hope I'm not, but it was a crazy number, like of guitars. It was just wild. Okay, let's see. What else? What else? What else? I just found Big Wreck. Uh, yeah, Big Wreck is uh, an unbelievable band that is yeah. criminally underrated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ian's like, yeah, I need to go back and mine that stuff too. Thank you for reminding me. I mean, it's the, when you find the, the best combination of your favorite kind of guitar forward playing and great songwriting and great singing. Yeah. It's rare. And he's got all of that. Yeah. He has all of it. Yeah. It's really wild. Yeah. It's crazy how yeah. good he is. Um, and yeah, underrated. I turned Steve Stevens onto it recently. He hadn't really, uh checked them out that much and then he i sent him a song uh and he he listened to this one track and then he was like oh my god and he's like listen to the rest of the record he's like i got the rest of the album it's insane he's like this is crazy this guy's not you know worldwide known by everybody yeah well the world changed and and he you know i'm sure he has a very big audience but it's a niche audience and that's because it's kind of all you need well but yeah. i'm gonna go back and mind that stuff too you reminded me go back and start listening again they're a little like king jex i mean they're like unbelievable band with die hard fans that are yeah. just like all about yeah. it you know but, but aaron's like, band is like that too intervals i mean hmm. that's the that's the way to be successful these days is to find you know it's a, this is a cliche but to find your tribe hmm. and if it's four thousand people fine if it's ten thousand if it's a hundred thousand it doesn't have to be a million people it doesn't have to be a hundred million people no it's it's your tribe it's true it's 100 percent true yeah because they they uh you know in the old days would take most of your dough <laughs> the record company you yeah. had your little you know your little 12 percent to split between all the band members or something you know and uh now you know if you can keep it small but keep it all yeah keep it small but keep it all folks it is wow yeah and then you're you know you're running a small business in a band these days basically truly uh it's a, it's a cool thing King's X are very underrated. They are so underrated. But, you know, the beautiful thing is when you go see them play, like everybody there singing every word to every song. You know, last time I saw them was at the Whiskey. It was packed, but it was the Whiskey. It's a club. Everybody's singing every word. And there's, it's like, a, it's like uh, going to church or something. You go to King's X church when you go to a show, you know, and it's so fun. Yeah, that's the new success, truly. Yeah. And and the funny thing is they've been doing it forever like that, you know, so now they're kind of they're putting out a new record pretty soon, I right. think. And, you know, they keep teasing it on Instagram and stuff. I can't wait to uh, to to check it out. Thank you for the super chat. That is sorry, man. My eyes are so bad. Uh, it's hard. To, I've got the screen kind of far so you can see both of us. But Jesco Plumbing Supply, I believe. Tim uh, can share his Woodrow pedal settings in that video. It was amazing. The Woodrow uh, from UA? Yeah, from UA. Oh, so what did you 
you with that? Well, they asked for free presets on all three pedals. Oh. And it, it didn't come that easy to me. I worked really hard. I took one evening on each pedal. Hmm. And the thing about the Woodrow is that's the amp I ignored my whole life, the small tweed amp, right? Because, you know, for me, Vox Marshall basically is where I lived. And then okay. Frederick divided by 13. And then Naylor, which was the extension of the Soldano. So first it was Soldano, hmm. and then it was Naylor, and then it was divided by 13 in the boutique area. And then it was always Vox and Marshall. And occasionally I would use a Fender, but an old tweed amp, hmm. I ignored that stuff. Okay. So that for me took a little bit of work, and I'm glad it paid off. I'm glad, I'm glad it works. And then I tried it yesterday down at the UA hmm. thing, and like, oh, this is, why am I discovering this so late? It's cool. And it's cool. And it makes you play a certain way. And it's basically like all the Eagles records in my, you know, there were mm. records before that, probably a lot of Stones records. Yeah. I mean, what records would that amp have been on? Well, Neil Young was all about, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and like Mike Campbell now still is, he's a Tweed, uh, Tweed Deluxe, I think, and a Princeton mix together. Yeah. Which is when you think about it. Yeah. How cool. Yeah, you know, I've actually played his rig in oh, in God. Dave's uh, shop oh, with his paddle board and everything, and oh, the wow. two amps and, and the wow. the uh, the Fender uh, rotary cabinet. Wow. You can switch it all in. Uh, when Dave was working on it, it, was like this is bitching. Like it's a great volume, like a Princeton and a Tweed together. It's just yeah, it's for like, the stage. Yeah, so cool. Um, so and, there you go. I mean, it, I I kind of I had my own thing, and it was always Vox Marshall centered, mm. and then the the divided by thirteen took you know really was has been my palette for a long time but so thank you yeah i i'm, I'm ready to discover that sound and, and i can you can just get it direct yeah you know i love basements too like tweed basement i mean it's basically that's proto marshall yes the, you're right me too the, the crossover from you yeah. know the, the late 50s fenders to marshall it's not that it's just, it's a jtm 45 basic or jtm 45 is the basement basically when you think about the four inputs but those pedals those ua pedals are great and i was resist resistant at first Thought, yeah. you know what is this really going to work right they work well and you're the guy to test it because you're used to listening so often through microphones and caps yeah i'm on microphones every day yeah. Yeah. yeah so you can still still there yeah i have a room with microphones i'm on it all the time by the way you should see this cab room i haven't seen it since like you thank god oh yeah we yeah. show us a photo yeah i'll <laughs> dial it up i'm sorry to make you but uh it's i didn't realize I, i've seen it it's built in your garage and the last time I saw it, it had some more modern, like a, two cabinets in there, I think. But now it's yeah. like you've It'll been take collecting. take me one second, but I'll get right to it. What speaker and mics and position do you like for Vox tones? Uh, to me, the the only speaker to use is a, either a blue or a silver uh, Alnico, you know, for Vox tones. And mic position just depends. But here's, look at that. <laughs> That's Tim's cab room. <laughs> yeah. And there's other cabs too. On the other side, there's a Marshall and a Vox, but that's the main one end of the room. It's four vintage Marshall cabinets, all double mic'd. I mean, come on. And vintage speakers. And I, I'm in heaven now. It took me a while to put this together, but yeah. That is the coolest thing ever. You know, all dialed up, ready to go. Sounds good. On the switcher. One thing I wanted to mention though, and I learned it from you, the, uh, the, the VHT, is it called the Power Station? yeah revolutionary i love it i use it all uh, the yeah time. i mean my i watched your video because i wanted to make a video about it because i wanted to tell the world about it yeah you can take any amp and it sounds identical you find the best sweet spot in the amp which is always too loud yeah always right, too right, loud right? right and then you take the power station you just dial it down to whatever volume you want yeah i run mine on about three or four generally and it's it's yeah. it's a good solid 40 yeah. percent reduction so and i think the single channel one at 50 water is fine i have the 100 water i might trade it for the 50 water because i don't think i need it you know what? It, the, do you have an opinion about the 100 versus the 50 yes and i think it's a little more pure i think it's a little more transparent than the 50 then i'm keeping the 100 i think you should <laughs> it, nothing wrong with the 50 it's great but when i compare it because i had both and so it's just a little the little you know because it's different tubes see what you do for us i'm sorry it's like you <laughs> just answered a question i don't have to answer the question now well this is a good one because i made it simpler. i don't have to ask i don't have to answer it you answered yeah. it yeah i oh. honestly i really think you might hear it differently but i honestly yeah. having had both yeah. if the original one was great the new one was a little bit of an improvement i'm sure steve Keeping might say that too no he likes the 50 i talked to him he was likes he? the 50 oh well, yeah. i like them both, I yeah. like them both. but yeah. to me it just sounded really pure and uh 
like you, uh, the way I test it is I'll I'll put the volume at the exact same, you know. So that's and what I, I did. I copied your video when I did my video. That's how, yeah. and I even oh. mentioned it. Yeah. Oh, you start cool. at Unity. Start at Unity. Yeah. And just yeah. make sure listen to the switches and, and the switches. Do you run in the switches in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. In the middle. Too. In the yeah. middle. Presence and depth off usually. Yeah. yeah. And just volume. Yeah. It's great. It's wow, fun. guys. It's fun. Uh, Keep learning. Uh, Never stop learning. I mean, neither. I mean, it's 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 crazy. I learned something. I, I always learn something from you guys out there. Like every week, somebody says something that's like, "Hey, Pete, you know." Animals. It's really true. When you're challenged, it, you, you just your thought process. You start learning immediately. Yeah, totally. Hundred percent. Okay, who's this? Is it a lot of AC thirty stuff today? I like that because it's great. Pete and Tim, I just started playing through AC30, and I love it. I'm wondering what are, uh, oh, a magnetone to me is like it's. I've only played through. Have you ever played through a vintage magnetone? Uh, yeah, and it was m mine was too clean. I had an amazing example of uh, vintage magnetone, and it did not break up. Okay. So I don't know what the new ones sound like. Uh -huh. uh, so maybe you do, but the one I had was a clean app. All clean. Well, the I, I think they're kind of different now. And that, but did you ever try the new one that's got the stereo tremolo in it? I had the one with stereo tremolo that was the original, the real one, oh. the real version, and it did not break up at all. Did the tremolo sound cool? Though? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, because <laughs> the new one I tried it was, was like amazing. It's like oh gosh. Yeah, it was uh, just sound yeah. that I couldn't because yeah. I I struggled yeah. to, to say what it sounds like Marshall Marshall or Vox because I turned on that tremolo and then it was just like another world like it was like this beautiful stereo thing. Yeah, so it. that's that was the virtue of it. It's this, but it but it was clean even when you turned yeah. it all the way up. It's like oh, this is still clean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. wanted it immediately yeah. when I heard the yeah the the that beautiful mod. But the stereo sound. effect is just drool worthy. It's just put you in a trance. Yeah, I had the same experience. Yeah, it was so cool. Uh, he's asking if that Mick Mars amp is going to be released by Friedman. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, that belonged to uh, Richard Fortas, of course, and then Mick Mars. And uh, Dave definitely knows what's going on with it. And um, Dave and Richard are, are close. But I, I can't say whether or not they're going to do that together or not. I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, let's see. John says Ian Thornley is a monster. He sure is. Uh, I had a Fender twin like that in the seventies would not break up ever. You ever have seventies fenders? Oh yeah. 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 Do you like any of them? Or well, a, a little too clean and a little yeah. too unforgiving. You yeah. Know, I would say, yeah, we, we like amps that actually begin to <laughs> break up at around five or six and, and that one a little too bright maybe. And yeah, a little too unforgiving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you liking the new update on the Quad Cortex? You know, I haven't downloaded it yet, but I tried it yesterday, and there's some cool stuff in there. So mm -hmm. I tried it, and the, there's a neural uh, display downstairs here, and I'll definitely find a use for some of the stuff that's in there. There's some cool stuff going on. Uh, Guys, by the way, I watch Pete's live streams uh, every Sunday. I, sometimes I don't catch them live. But but I'm there. I get so much out of them. If if you're uh, if you're there, you should just text me and I'll send you a link and then you can chime in. Okay, <laughs> I would love that. Okay, <laughs> anytime. We'd... I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> no, are you kidding? <laughs> this is so much fun. It's just me sitting there and 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 all you guys out there as well. But you know, they get, I'm sure they get bored of me hearing me yell. Uh, it's funny. It's it makes makes people happier to watch you. You know, it's it's really it's a comfort watching you on Sunday morning. Well, the world's a crazy place, and I think we have we all have fun thinking about guitar for a while. Yeah, that would be true. You know, yeah. when we can get out of our uh, our heads. Uh, where do you set the tone click on a JRT nine fifteen? It's been years since I played one of those amps, uh, but yeah, use your ears. And yeah. I can't remember. It was all the way to one side for me. I mean, okay. if if I'm guessing, it was all the way like this. Mm, interesting. I remember. If I'm guessing, but it was it was. It was not in the middle. It was all the way. Mm. Chris Cornell had one. Uh, Duraco Rosa, guy I used to work with, had one. Yeah. Uh, and those are the only ones I've ever played through. So, but uh, they, were, they were cool. Uh... Use your ears. That's all you got to do. And and don't worry if it's only one spot. See, that's the thing I keep preaching. So, Just because a device does six things or a hundred things, there's probably only one thing you're going to want to set it at. I'm, I'm that way with the fractal. I love yeah. the guys at fractal, but there's only two amps in there that I use. And then I mess with those. Well, you know, Even though that's they have 300 okay. amps. I use two of them. So yeah. 
if you're going, well, I bought this thing and it does all this stuff. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Find the one thing that it does right for you. And it might just be one thing. When I toured with a fractal, I did that just kind of uh, on purpose. I picked because I want I was using it as a kind of like a second a B rig, mm -hmm. uh, fly rig and stuff. Yeah. So I copied as close as I could the channels in my amp uh, with three. I went, all right, clean rhythm crunch uh, lead, yeah. three amps um, and one cabinet sound. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. When you play live, you only come in through one cabinet yeah. generally. So why send them five different? Yeah. The sound guy's going to go, oh, why does the sound get so bright all of a sudden? Or Because you're switching yeah. cabinets, you know, yeah. the massive. Yeah. It just makes it better. So you can simplify and it's good. Find the one thing and just stick with it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and on the 915 as well, you know, it's so dependent with any amp and uh, on what guitar you're playing. So one, that's why you know one guy might they give you these tone options because one guy might have a low output you know strat or something somebody else is playing a telly with like a 8k bridged single coil through it and then somebody else is whacking it with a 14k jb or something and it's like night and day like output that was the boss compressor you're, you're saying I, you saw me demoing the cp1x uh and i don't honestly i don't use compression uh that's I, but i was blown away by that pedal the boss mm. compressor it's a newer away. one, right? The yeah. new version. New version, it. yeah. Boss yeah. Wazacraft are great pedals. I just got the the new vibrato, the Wazacraft VB2. That's great. It is great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember Michael Thompson showing us the yeah. the with the Ebel. Yeah. And how you right. yeah with the momentary vibrato so it becomes like a voice. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Momentary. Yeah. I was like, that's the cool. Yeah. The two things I learned that day. Well, I learned a lot of stuff that day actually because that, that was really great. That was fun going there, but um. The, the vibrato pedal with an ebo and you hold a note and then you push the momentary on the vibrato and it yeah instead of a voice like even with a you can do it with your finger you can do it with a slide but yeah. you just slide the note and then use the vibrato pedal to do yeah. the it's really yeah. cool i think he was playing slide with it wasn't he or yeah was i he think he was, was yeah it was really cool and then the mod delay he did with an h9 you know everybody uses h9 from micro pitch or or uh, or an original h3000 mm -hmm. but he was doing mod delay yeah he that set was... mine up for that and i used it for years we were in the yeah. studio together he said let me show you how i do it <laughs> so, but that's generous right for somebody to say this is my secret here he's kind of like used that it. Yeah. yeah and thanks yeah. uh michael yeah. if you ever see this he wished me a uh, happy birthday yesterday i appreciate yeah. that so okay, yeah. i gotta look him up yeah he's a good dude um the other thing that's great you and i you both i think probably have it is the game changer Biz bigsby pedal right i don't have it yet but i i it yeah. it does in so you can you massage it in real time it's like going like so you're playing your les paul so cool. and all of a sudden you turn it into a gretch by just pressing on the big speed pedal. that really is cool. so cool wow, those guys are cool they're yeah. have you ever met them the game changer guys? oh yeah they came to my house right before they came to your house okay okay like they're, a few weeks ago they are uh the coolest dudes they're the coolest dudes yeah this from finland latvia latvia yeah that's it god i gotta remember that yeah um Let's see. Let's see. Most let's memorable see. studio performance. Oh, okay. See, walking into a studio and playing with Phil Collins sitting there on the drums. Oh, right. Wow. It's like, what? And he's playing his drums, and it's that sound. That's the sound. Dun, from dun, the, dun, 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 that's the sound. <laughs> and he's tuning his drums. And I go, there's a guy, you know, like very workman like tuning his drums. And, yeah. And I'm about to track with Phil Collins. What year was that? Uh, it was in the 90s. What artist was it? Uh, it was Tarzan. It was the, you know, oh. um, You'll Be In My Heart. It was actually, he won the Academy Award for that song. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Tarzan, yeah. Okay, God, yeah. that's crazy. That's yeah. cool, man. Oh, that's and you have me. a memorable live one, which is about to blow me away, too. Whatever it is. Which one? You, they're asking your most memorable live performance. Oh, I don't performance. see that. Where is it? Can I highlight it? Uh, see, Tim. No, it's it's right here on the screen right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> most memorable live the uh the the fuji uh uh show i did with joshi nagabuchi in 2015 i thought you were gonna say chris cornell or don henley or uh no uh, uh, amazing i mean melissa right plenty the, of those but okay no, so this one right yeah. joshi because it yeah. was all night live it was when you're ever going to do a gig all night live on a unbelievable a stage that looks like a spaceship till seven in the morning you know it was a uh, hundred thousand people you know all waving japanese flags freaking out and it was like this cathartic weird experience that i'll never i'll never do another there's not no there's nothing you'll never ever, do that again yeah, yeah. unless he decides yeah. to do like right. a let's do it again and, and you were outdoors and, yeah outdoors with no no uh nothing above us and it was raining every day leading up to the gig and i'm like literally they had like 
when we were doing production rehearsals, they had like plastic sheets draped above and there was just pooling water on this plastic sheet all above my amps and pedal board. <laughs> and what, like, did it clear is... for the concert? Yes, the concert from the night. Of... So I swear to God, it rained for seven days leading up to the concert. And then we do the show. No rain all night. Unbelievable. I was like, this is going to be a, literally a wash, you know, and leading up to the show, all this rain, 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 nothing the day of beautiful that night all the way through the morning the sun comes up and it's blue sky there's fuji and it was just like this okay. is unbelievable later in the afternoon that day rains again and starts raining again after that it was like <laughs> it was <laughs> it was like destiny yeah you're right you can't beat that can't top that it was super crazy oh man it was, it was great really, question really fun wow thanks uh let's see uh what do we got here what a story. Yeah, thanks. It was, yeah, I still pinch myself that I got, got to be a part of that. It's crazy and like many things. Well, you know, we have our session soon, Pete. So I don't want to. We got to go soon. I know. Yeah, we do. Uh, unfortunately, we ran over. Can we go another 10 minutes? And I can. Push yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Let's go another yeah. 10. Sorry, guys. It's going to be a little short today because we were late starting with our little. I'm glad this ended up working, though. And nobody's been saying that the stream's not working. Uh, really they asked happy. us to do a recording session in their fabulous studio. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to go down and play yeah. down. Sure. Yeah. Right? What are we going to do? Uh, uh, Nick, Nick, speaking of Virgilia, Genesis, yeah, yeah. Nick was almost doing a Genesis Crazy, version of Genesis. amazing drummer. Multi he's, a, he's an amazing lead singer, too. Have you ever heard him sing? Uh, no, I haven't. He's an amazing really? lead singer. Maybe he'll yes. sing on our track. He can, yeah. 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 I'm going to grab a, a 12 string. <laughs> yeah. Tim's going to play whatever Tim does yeah. his thing, and it's going to be amazing, I'm sure. And then we're going to just layer a track and we're going to make a song and film a video. Great. It's going to be fun. Uh, so just like, yeah, we'll go five, ten more minutes here, and then we're going to jet you guys. We'll do this. we got to do this again. It's so much fun. Yeah. I like this. Like, we could do it, like, once every month or two. Just It doesn't okay. have to be scheduled or something. Yeah, we're, we'll do it again. Yeah, and either together it's or time. we can phone in. To, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah it's I, time. The la I did do one with you in 2019, I think, where we, right before, I think it was 2019 yeah. or 2020, where yeah. we did a, uh, yeah. you know, but, but, yeah, we should do it more. All right. Uh, anything else? questions from you guys and stuff before we uh, sorry it'll be a little a little short today but i'm glad we got to do this too because i can't do my sunday tomorrow oh good because yeah. uh, i'm traveling back on a plane so. yeah um, although you have been known to stream from airports right yeah yeah but yeah but my timing's like, bad tomorrow yeah. yeah it's all flying yeah to get, you know yeah get, to get me. what's your favorite song tim played on well i mean the uh the Carter House song is legendary. Sure. I mean, yeah, that's Don't Dream just, It's Over. Yeah, I'm that's so lucky to be part of that. It's so beautiful. It's yeah. like, and yeah. the guitar part is yeah. so. So, did you write that part? That's Neil. I'm playing all the fill, fills. Okay, so got I it. even have his demo. He, he, that's his, his, he wrote that. Yeah. He wrote that. Okay. Yeah, yeah but it's yeah. just so. It, but it's what identifies the song, and it's a great guitar part, soaked in reverb. Yeah, yeah. Which is wonderful. Wonderful, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then my guitar is soaked in delays. Yeah. I'm doing just all this ambient stuff all around it. Tracked live off the floor. What's a song you played on that I don't know you played on? That's, oh. That's like killer. Do you know yeah. about the Shinedown stuff? No. No, <laughs> yeah, their stuff. Uh, let me think about this. You're putting me on the spot a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to. Uh, yeah. If you, that's, that's enough to just be loud. Just five minutes and it'll, something will pop into my head. Yeah, if you think of one that's like, oh, yeah, this was cool. This was me. Oh, like, oh okay. I mean, I remember hearing Tim on like uh, Kevin Gilbert's the Toy Matinee album, of course. And then yeah, Mark, Mark right. Benilla ended up doing the tour. Yeah, yeah. Because you were the like band fractured immediately. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> there were two camps, and I stayed in the other camp. So oh. Kevin put a band together with Cheryl Crow was in that band too. They were great. Oh. I yeah. sat in with them at the Roxy. So oh, awesome. It was detente, you know. But but yeah, yeah we were all friends. But, but you did all the guitar on Last Plane Out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, give me a right, break. Yeah. If you guys haven't heard that, go check it. Go listen to the last plane out. Yeah. With that, the intro is insane. Yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I remember hearing that, just freaking out. And I also remember re Mark's great, I'm sure. And I don't, I don't know him. I've never met him, but I remember hearing like, "Oh, he's not the guy that's on the record." Oh, <laughs> I wonder who the guy on the record is. He's amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah. so cool. That, I'm gonna pick that as my favorite. Actually, now that I think about it, because that song blew my mind. I remember uh, the uh, KLOS. I mean, they were, they, such, they were such a champion of Toy Matinee and Kevin, too. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin's solo stuff's amazing, too. He's a great guitar player, too. And uh, yeah. there's a record he did called Thud. If you get a chance, go stream. 
Thud by Kevin Gilbert. You know, he, your mind. he used to uh, come over and do like, like, so his studio was at the end of the street in Pasadena. And I had started writing songs with this woman, Jen Gross. And we, we started a, a duo, songwriting yeah. duo. And uh, she lived with this guy, Robert Ferris. And anyway, we all became friends and stuff. And I started working with her. Well, Kevin would come over to take showers and stuff in the morning like because he hadn't showered all night or something in the studio. Didn't have yeah, he lived there for a little while up in the cubby hole in the corner. And right? There's no shower. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah, I think I so. So yeah. he'd come over in the morning and stuff and we'd be in there writing and she would be like, hey, we're working on the song. You want to? And all of a sudden, like he'd go, oh, OK. And he'd get involved. And all of a sudden he starts producing, basically. We had a Tascam D88 and a Mackie 16 channel wow. mixer. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. Yeah. And, you know, like a couple acoustics and an electric with a little Fender amp or something. He would come in and he put one mic on the drums and then a mic on the kick and he'd play a drum part, you know, just and I'd, some scratch guitar or whatever. And then he'd, he'd go play guitar and he'd totally produce me. And he'd be like, oh, man, that's great. You know, he was so much fun. You know, I'd yeah. lay or something. He'd pick up a bass, and I remember yeah. a, a, one of those little music master basses, the short scale or whatever. And we'd have a song in like an hour before I knew it. And that stuff, man, I wish I had that stuff. Jen might have it still to this day, but yeah, dig it up. We did a bunch of fun stuff like that together. It's amazing. It's, yeah, so it holds up. So cool. I learned so much from that guy. Um, we should probably wrap it up, which is uh, it's too bad, but I know it's going to take us. 10 minutes to get down yeah we have some people waiting for us downstairs and and this place is so heavily booked that there's i'm sure there's people after us down there too so probably there's a super chat from edbert i'm going to take a look really quick here uh music therapy laz thank you so much man for the super chat where are you edbert there's patrick carroll thanks Uh, guys we really appreciate it will there be a second version of your i thought about that so stand yeah. by. I'm going to call them and see if they're willing to do it. Is that Absolutely. rocket? Yeah. Cool. It's a really great pedal. Company. Are acoustic Thank IRs you, legit and stable, or are they just a gimmick? Uh, I think they're really good. I, I've used them. I like them. I used them I used them on a gig with Chris Cornell. Is that legit enough? Uh, I thought it was great. In my Helix, uh, to augment the sound of a Takamini. And I remember the sound guy going, what is that guitar? It sounds amazing. But, of course, you know, the Takamini sounds nice, but it's a, a little more typical sort of piezo sort of bridge sound and i would add this ir to it of a tailor that i found online and it just sounded like a great mic'd up guitar so it's totally legit but it's not going to work in every situation you have to try it with your particular guitar and stuff um thank you guys sorry it was a little short today but at least we got this in i really and thanks for waiting for us yeah. we we were we were working right. really really hard we had a team they just have a firewall here that we couldn't penetrate so yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and thanks sweetwater for having us here uh gear fest 20, 2022 and we'll do this again soon. So, we will. Some, somehow, Thanks, guys. Somewhere.